All right. Says we're live. Everything looks all right. If you hop on, let me know where you're from. Can you hear me? Can you see me? Uh, let me, I can tell if you could see me, I guess. So just let me know if you can hear me. Yes, you could see me. So that's awesome. You got to see me. Just tell us hi. Let us know where you're from, what you're doing, how's your weather today, all that fun stuff. And have you been enjoying all the different paper videos that I've been showing you? All the different paper packs that are on sale this month. I've been trying to give you a fun card to make, an easy card to make, so that you can, uh, if you've already got the paper, you've got some ideas that you can use it with. Um, if you don't have the paper, then it maybe it'll spark some creativity or show you the patterns that you um, weren't aware of and stuff that you'll want to get. So uh, tonight I have the perennial lavender paper. And can we address the not so much elephant in the room anymore? We've got um, the shelves back up. And for some reason, it's kind of got a whole, um, as before, I said that it um, changed my the background. It was totally different looking. That Now that I have these shelves up, I've done nothing different Um well, my table's in a little bit different spot, but I haven't really changed my lights or anything. So it's just, the view is just different with a background. And look, I got shadows back there. I did not even uh, check my lights to see if I had them in a good spot or not since I moved the table a little bit. So I can play with that later. Tonight, we are going to get going with the... Um, card uh real quick though i do want to say if you're not on my newsletter list i plead out the other day please log into greenthumbstampers.com click on get my newsletter put your email address in so that we have a connection made um, whether you're a lurker or not i i won't call you out via your email and say hey please buy from me or any of that um, it just helps me be able to keep in touch with people as um, things move along and possibly I, I get um, hacked by somebody. And also, I can see that I'm growing by my numbers. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you from my heart to you. Um, but I'm not getting any new followers. So it's a whole game. If you know anybody that likes to watch card making videos, see if they know about me, spread the word, let them know. Um, one of the biggest ways for me to um, get seen is to have you guys share. Not a lot of people share my videos. I know it clogs up your feed and you don't want me on your feed and all that stuff. So um, if you could just mention me to your friends, tell them to watch me, follow me. Even if they don't watch me, if they just follow me, that will help me grow. Um, and that's what I'm looking for. I just got to keep growing. I, I can see that my videos are getting a lot more views and all that, but people just aren't following me yet. So I'll work on it. I'll keep working on it, working on me, doing whatever. Um, my people are out there. Those people that like the, I'll call quirkiness of me, the, the jabber jaw, the whatever of me, my people are out there. I just got to find them i gotta um get help being found so um hey christy and debbie and julie that's all i can see that's on so i'm gonna get started you guys um this was a quick pop on i got all sidetracked i made a nice dinner for mike and got all sidetracked and so let's um see if although look at here my my um desk <clears throat> has uh okay you see my desk my desk has gotten a little bit darker looking but let's just go with it so i'm going to show you a few of the patterns quick you guys have probably no doubt seen this paper it was a carryover um it's the perennial lavender paper um got some really really pretty purples and the um Greens. We got some shaded spruce. We got some um, 
Lost Lagoon and just the patterns are just so, so, so pretty. Oh, that's on the back of that one. Here's almost a solid sheet for our scrapbook and friends can use. Um, did I show you all those? This one. Got some, I'm going to call that Queen Anne's Lace in there. And let me look real quick, see if there's any others. This is, oh, I didn't show you guys this. Here's a, one of those I showed you before that cut in half, but it's going this way. So I don't know, you could make some, you could cut it down the center and then make some quarter, some triangles. A triangle card out of this one on the um, just half, half of the front. And then down here, you could do a solid one. And then maybe you might, you're probably going to have to do another triangle one down there. But it's possible to cut that in half and utilize just that area of the paper. So that's this paper, the Perennial Lavender. And like I said, it's a carryover. And um, let's see if I can get that in there. I always put all my paper back in these packages that they came out of and I end up getting using the corner too sharply and cutting ripping the package open so here's the card we're going to make okay this one is called a double twisted ribbon all right so I'm going to go slow so that my uh, brain can process this and do it correctly the first time around so Get that a little bit up there so you could see. Oh, hey, Mom. Thanks for hopping on. Something Ludington. Oh, you're from Ludington with beautiful weather. Oh, my God. That beautiful weather. It was gorgeous here today. Absolutely gorgeous. But they say it's going to heat up. So, um, you know, we're, we're ready for it. By Monday, it's going to be back up into the 90s. So let me get all my pieces and parts out here. Let me tell you, I got a base, a crumb cake base at eight and a half by five and a half. We'll just fold it in half and then we're going to cut a little bit off the front. Let's see if I can do it this way. We're going to cut an inch and a half off the front so where's my here's my inch and a half all right so we've got an inch and a half we've cut off the front i have four I'm holding my breath again. Sorry. Oh, okay. So this leaves us with two, one, two and three quarters inches over here, right? This is two and three quarters inches. So I have a shaded spruce at two and a half by five and a half. And then I have a berry burst at two and a quarter by five and a half. Then we have a basic white at two by five and a half. So I'm not sure if you're writing any of that down. You cut off an inch and a half. This is two and three quarters. So you got two and a quarter. Or sorry, two and three quarters. You got two and a half, two and a quarter. And then your white you're going to work with is two inches by five and a half. Then over on this side, because I have one and a half where I cut it off, this piece is one and three eighths by five and a half. And my plan is to butt that right up against the edge where I cut it off. And then that will leave me a little bit of the crumb cake over here. Then my berry burst is one and an eighth by five and a half. And then I chose this pattern 
at one or seven eighths, sorry, by five and a half. And they're probably a little bit long. I'm going to probably have to trim them off at the top. But so that is our buildup of our base. Okay, now I'm just going to, should have glued all that on while I was yakking, but I'll do it after. All right, so now we have our two inch by five and a half inch piece of paper. Hey, Janice. You're going to take this paper and score it ever at every inch. So you're going to score at one, two, three, four, and five. All right. And even though this little bit down here, you're still going to score at every inch. All right. Now you're going to need four patterned papers. I've got the green. And I've got like four strips each. I think that that should be enough because I think it looks like um, one of them I used two and some bits and parts. So we're good. I just have some extras here, I believe, that I had cut from the first one. And then I've got this green pattern. And then I have this deep purple pattern. And then I got some little bits for the um, front, but we'll get to that. So you're going to take, I'm going to start with purple. I'm going to follow my card here, put it over here so that um, I don't mess myself up. Now, if you put these on wrong, you see these little triangles down the center. If you put these on wrong, these little triangles aren't going to be like that. So just kind of keep that in mind to help yourself. But you're going to get some glue. Did I bring my glue? Yes, I brought my glue. Hold on. I'm making myself all nervous. I got to take my coat off. Even though I'm chilly, I'm going to take my coat off just so <clears throat> I got to focus. I get myself all worked up here. All right. So we're going to take our one inch strips. They are also a half an inch wide. And I've got them about three inches long just because you're going to want it to overhang. So um, three inches is good. If you're using a full strip of 12 by 12, then feel free to cut them four inches um, or just keep them at three inches and you should get four of them out of the side and be good. Um, so we're going to start with our first piece and I'm going to start with purple. You want to lay oh look at here i've already messed up myself we're going to lay our first piece we're going to go from score line to score line so we're going to go from the top here down to the score line and let me just make sure because I could be because I'm on I need to perform I'm uh messing myself up let me just lay them down Julie says lay your pieces down first so I'm going to do that just to make sure I'm doing it right so then the next one we're going to come from the second score line down to this is wrong we're going to go down to the bottom of the first score line so go from the top down to the bottom of the first score line and you're going to want it to hang over then you're going to bring the second piece from the one inch score line to the bottom of the two inch score line like this And we're going to come back to purple and we're going to go to the bottom of the third score line or yeah over here to the bottom like that and we're going to come back with our green we're going to do the same thing on the next one And 
And then we're going to come in with our purple again, like this. And end like that, okay? Then we can come back in with our green and lay that along there as if we were going to put it on. And we can come back up and do the same up here and just kind of put it along there as if it was really on there. So it's gonna look like that. All right, and so now I'm gonna glue because I feeling confident in myself that I've got them going on, right? So we're gonna go from the top point to the bottom of the first score line. Top point to the bottom of the score line. Again, from the point to the bottom of the score line. Ooh, that one might be pushing it as being on there in the right spot. All right, keep going. Oh, hi, Bonnie. Bonnie's on too. All right, we got one more here. Go to the bottom. All right, we got all those on. And then now we're just gonna glue some little greenies on in that same like idea. We're gonna go from the bottom. You just wanna kind of make sure you got the same spacing in there as the others and call it good. And so I'm gonna put some glue on this piece so that I can just lay my green. We wanna cover the point. And I'm just gonna lay the green over there. All right. So now we're going to come through. We're done with our green and our purple. Now we're going to come through. And I, my thinking here is I'm going to do the green next because the green, um, it's twisted ribbon. So it looks like here's the ribbon and then it's twisted over. And then you see it again, then it's twisted over. So I'm coming with the greens to stay with the green ribbon. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to do the same thing in like the other direction. We're going to put our green down. Then we'll come in with our purple and we're going to come up to the corner and then down to that score line or actually you want to cover up make sure you've covered up that point so that's what we're going to do and I'm going to just glue these down as I go because I'm living on the edge I'm feeling confident I've got this so here's my line I'm going to come down here but I got to cover that up so then we're going to come up to the corner up here and then we're going to use a purple. We're doing the same thing. We're coming to this corner. And we're going to come down here and cover up that edge. We got another green. And I don't didn't give it much thought if we should switch up the the direction that the like the leaves are going. I didn't make a separate one to try that and see how that looked, but by all means, go ahead and give that a try. So we're going to cover up corner to corner, bring in another purple. Covered your air conditioner. You got another month before you got to be covering that air conditioner.
All right, so we're going again from corner to corner, and this one sticks out over the edge of the paper, so I'm just finding the edge of the paper because we'll trim that off. to come down here yeah with us getting 90 next week i won't be covering the air conditioner for anytime soon all right so now we've got extra two pieces we want to go from like corner to corner so to speak with these just to fill in the gap so we're going to start where our paper is and then we'll just come down to the edge like that and these I had a couple small ones that I saved for this so we'll do the same thing up here we want to go from I guess that's going to cut off. We want to cover that edge, but we're going to go from this direction. Hope that's going to look right. Okay, now that doesn't necessarily look right. So let's just give it a second. I'm going to let it dry a little bit. Kind of wipe off any excess. Find my scissors. I could use my cutter, but I'm going to use my scissors and I'm going to cut these little pieces off. Like this. And... I suppose if you wanted to make a bigger card, you could just keep right on going. If you made a slimline card, you could keep right on, you know, make this white piece bigger and then just keep going with your score lines so that you can fold it over or cross it over the score, score line. All right. So now the magic should display. Now you see how cut all those little bits and pieces off and now it looks good looks right so now we have our twisted ribbon and you can see now see how it's going back and forth and then this one is get it up there a little bit so you can you can see how how that looks hey Lori thanks for hopping on Christy's on and Kathy's on. Hey guys. Christy's had a long day. Teresa's on. Jeez, you guys, I got all kinds of people on tonight. Thanks for watching. Um, so now we can build the build the card up again. So if anybody got on a little bit late, I gave the measurements for this. You're gonna just use a regular card base. You're gonna cut an inch and a half off of the front panel. And then we're just going to load it up with a few layers. So this piece here was two and three quarters. So my shaded spruce is two and a half by five and a half. And then this white was two inches by five and a half inches. Going to glue those all on. And they should kind of, you know, all butt up at the bottom. Looks like I've got a little bit hanging over the top. Let's just see how it's going to fit on here. We're going to glue that on here. Oh, yeah, we'll need to trim that just a smidge. So let me get that glued on.
Oh, I'm going to glue it down to the bottom so I can cut it off at the top. All right, so now we've got our decorative piece glued on. I'm going to go ahead. You can use your trimmer. Probably a better idea because this is pretty thick to be cutting with scissors. You're apt to get a crooked cut that displays as such, but it didn't do too bad. Then on this half over here, because it was one and a half inches right here that we cut off, this is one and three eighths. And I'm just going to do this first. And I'm going to put that on here. Show you. I'm going to butt it right up against to my edge part that opens. So that I have a slight border over here of the crumb cake. Then we have the one and an eighth by five and a half inch. Berry Burst. Dawn's on now too. Hey, Dawn. Okay, so we're just going to glue that on here. And then this designer series piece is seven eighths by five and a half. I kind of like it when they all have to go right down to the bottom. It's easier to make sure that they're all the same length. <clears throat> and then I'm just going to flip it over and trim this little piece off. And I cut into the crumb cake. I think, excuse me, holy cow, tickle. Okay, then I do have a piece that I was putting on here. It's two and <clears throat> not two and three quarters. It's like two and not quite five eighths because I want to leave room for this to shut. And if you make it the exact same size, then that's not going to shut. Possibly um, tight enough for you. So I'm just going to butt it right up against my green. And then I have enough space for that to close without causing any grief. You can stamp on that if you'd like. Remember to stamp before you glue, just in case you need to flip it over. Not that we ever need to do that. Uh huh. More times than not, do I say, eh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that again. So now there's our like, card base. I'm going to score that down. This is kind of thick with all those layers. Now we're going to move on to the front piece. So I have, move this for a second. I have my, um, let's see, this one's about two and a half inch wide from the perennial postage dies. I believe those, did those, get a drink, sorry. <clears throat> did those retire? I think, I think the lavender, set itself stayed in our inventory but these postage dies might have went out anybody that knows it it's oh i lost a little foot to my <clears throat> baby cutter but again like i say i'm pretty sure that these postage dies might have retired with the mini catalog but i'm going to cut cut that out So we cut out the, I'm going to set that over there. We cut out the little postage part. And then um, I do have the painted lavender set. And I'm going to stamp the, um, the, the branches and this little guy. So the the 
surprised when I didn't bring my thumb cake in. So let me get this. So because I didn't bring the ink, we're going to use the marker. And the only thing when you use the markers is they don't always come out um, nice and like a solid image. Sometimes you get a little bit of a... Um, I don't know if it's grainier. It's just not as... And after you do that, you always want to huff on it with your breath to moisten it. Um, see, I don't know how to describe that. What do you call that? It looks a little wetter. It's not the... It's a totally different look than if you stamped it, but I don't... Um, didn't want to run over and get the other ones. So that's what we're going with. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then I have that... I'm gonna call it a bush. It's not a bush, but the tops of the flowers. And I'm going to color those in gorgeous grape. All right, so I'm just going marker to stamp just on the flowers. Guys are playing tricks on me. Just on the flowers, best that you can. That's the stem, not the flower. That's a. I don't know if that's a stem. Yeah, I'm gonna say that's a stem. So I think I got all the flowers done, and so now I'm gonna get the um, crumb cake back out, and I'm gonna come in and do the stems and I can see I got purple down in there so I just want to be careful to if I touch it to try and wipe it off because the marker will pick up the other colors and you'll spread it around I don't know what I did there. It looks like I colored part of the flower. Oh, that is flower. Hold on. That is flower right there. <clears throat> all right. I think I got all the leaves. I got all the stems. All right, then after you do that, again, you're going to want to huff on it. So give it your hot breath like you're <laughs> you're going, huh. And then you just, it's not even a huh. It's just literally hot breath on it. And then I'm going to stamp it down. Oh, I didn't want to do that, you guys. <laughs> I'm going to take two seconds and quickly do it again because I had a really neat thing I was going to do to it. Hang on. I'll make, I won't be as careful on this one. Probably turn out better if I'm not as careful. Hold on, I got a cough. Um, Sorry. Holy cowsers. I don't cough like this all day, so it must be because I don't talk all day like this, so coming on at night when I'm sorry talking to you guys maybe my camera wouldn't that be sweet if it was nice enough to shut that horrible loud coughing hacky noise out of there all right so I got my oh, my stems back on there and I'm just going to take my burst and I'm going to thump it just like up and down kind of like a, you're just tapping it around on there we called it thumping back in the day but the, it kind of it kind of makes a just like a line I don't want it to make a line but it is what it is depends so if you've got to be a little more careful to get just the tip on there 
Now we're going to huff it. And I'll stamp it over here. So now, in my uh, theory here, it made the flowers like a couple different colors, like I was seeing on the paper. So here's the paper, and that's kind of what I was, I probably don't need that that close. That's what I was trying to come up with. Whereas this one is just the solid purple. So here I did purple and I juiced it up with the berry burst. So we'll bring our little guy here back in. And I'll get the... <clears throat> Whoa. Painted lavender dyes. And so... As I said yesterday with the unbounded love stamp, I did not get the, the dyes for the flowers and stuff because to me, this reminded me enough of it that I needed to use this one more. So you get a few uh, dyes that don't belong or don't aren't in there. You get this all weed thing here and... I'm going to say these and this, they're not all in here. These are extras. Whereas the rest of these cut out your little butterflies and the stem and things like that. This one does not cut out, but you get this instead. So <clears throat> that's what I used tonight. Got to give it a little love. And I said a week or so ago, I think that I needed to give some of my stamps some more love. So some new stuff that I got that needed to be opened up, inked up, loved a little bit. And then I'm going to put this one down here. Let's see if this is going to work. I didn't bring tape again. We're going to say that looks okay. Looks good. Perfect. Yes. Cut it out. Pull that baby on through. All right. So we got our flowers and our stems. And our sentiment will go on here. So I didn't bring the sentiment stamp over, darn it all, because that would just be too good. Okay. I don't see it. Huh. I move stuff around today when... Uh, so the perennial postage, I believe this is the one that um, retired with the, those dyes. So I'm going to use uh, but I can't thank you enough. Oh no, we're going to do the you mean the world to me because somebody might appreciate that kind of a sentiment. Uh, Hard. to me. We have a lot of people in our lives we probably should send a card like that to. We've got a lot of people in our lives we should send cards to. As card makers, do you guys send out very many cards? My upline says that we should Try and send at least three a week. And, you know, that, that could be pushing it. That might get a little pricey for some of us for our postage costs. But I guess if you can hand deliver them or if you're out on a walk, you could maybe stick it in their mailbox. It's probably illegal to do that, but you could.
I should be better at sending cards than what I am because, of course, like I said, we do. This is what we do. All right, so then I'm just going to glue these two together. A little glue on here. I was always sending out, um, picking a name off the video and sending out a kit of the card that I made that week. Maybe I should go back to doing something like that. I think I did it on the people that shared the video. And the same couple people kept winning every time. So <clears throat> not that it mattered that way to me at all but they might have got tired of getting the card kits or who knows all right so now i'm gonna i'm gonna put some glue down here i'm just gonna glue that onto here till i get going with the kind of gluing it at a little bit of an angle and then i have those two what did i over here, I got these two little crumb cake. And I'm going to just kind of give them a little tug. I'm going to separate them up a little bit. And I'm going to slide it in behind here like that. And again, I'm just going to Put a little bit of glue on there. Glue that in place. Hold it. Like I said, I'm going to tug on it a little bit to get it to spread around. And this other one, I'm going to do the same. And I'll put that one over here. See if I can. I don't know if I want that sticking up in there like that, but yeah, why not? What the heck? We'll leave that little tiny piece sticking up. Put some glue in there. And then I'm going to offset it a little bit. Let's see how bad it looks on the underside, though, before I decide if I'm going to do that. Oh, good. I didn't get too far off the... So I want to keep my dimensionals on this side of the... flowers. Just do this couple of these. And we're just going to put that center ish, kind of sort of a little bit lower so that the flowers aren't too far off. We get a good look at the, make sure that's not hanging over. That looks pretty good. We want to get a good look at our pretty display over there and I'm going to come through real no I'm not I'm going to mess it up because I heard my mom say Susie what are you doing I was going to try and fix that stem right there that's not showing but because when you huff on it and it gives a different look that would leave me a straight line across there that would show like a stick out like a sore thumb so I stopped myself thanks mom thank you for stopping me and then I just have these what are they called I think petal pink and pretty peacock foil gems and pretty peacock is in here so I'm just going to take I got a some small ones right here and I'm just going to set them around on the card um, 
I was trying to use up this sheet of stuff. Let's put one on here. And I'll stick one more. Let's go down in here. And then I don't have to worry about losing that little sheet of goodies. All right. So there we go, guys. A double twisted ribbon card. Now, I'm going to also tell you that you can make just a regular twisted ribbon card. You do it the same way, but you don't use two, like I got the purple and the green, just use all of the same color. So don't switch back and forth, purple, green, green, purple. Just use all one color underneath and then all one different. So you would use two pattern papers instead of four. And that's just called a twisted ribbon. Everything else is the same. Mark your white paper at every inch. Lay it from the line to the other line. You just have a first layer color and a top layer color. Whereas this one, we have two bottom layers and two top layers. Um, that's it. I appreciate you guys watching. I don't even know how long we were tonight. So a little bit longer, but I had this fun card. So I'll be back. Let's see tomorrow's Thursday. I don't think I have anything going on tomorrow night. So I should be back tomorrow night and we'll see what else I can pull out of a card kit bucket. And that's it, you guys. Thanks for watching, sharing, commenting, following everything, everything, everything. I appreciate you guys. And I thank you so much for helping me grow. Okay, thanks for helping me grow. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, everybody.